Good morning. We're here in the minor guardianship uh, docket. I'm Commissioner Dave Nelson. I just got a note that the guardianship of Adeline Reeves we're going to put over one week. Is that correct, Ms. Winkles? That is correct, Your Honor. Okay. And so one, the one thing is we have not, uh, Ms. Kennedy has not given her consent that Mr. Uh, South did. Uh, Your Honor. Ms. Kennedy? I'm having a hard time hearing everyone. It's, I, it's, it's all breaking up and. Yeah, same here. Can you hear okay. me right now? I did not quite. I, yes, but you're breaking up a little. The other parties would like to put this over one week, but apparently they haven't checked with you. Uh, do you have an objection to that? Um, no, I actually was going to see if we could possibly set it over for maybe two weeks because I'm finally able to um, get some legal advice. It's just not until 10 days. It, if we can set it over three weeks, then I'm unavailable in two weeks, but I can do. Okay. I'm weeks. unavailable on the fourth also. So that would put it to April 11th. What okay. about me? daughter's birthday is April 4th. Can we make a thing where I can spend time with her on her birthday? She's turning four on April 4th. And I'd like to see her on her birthday. And probably both parents would, I would assume. Not, yeah. not to speak for dad as well, but it. Tuesday, he did visitation with her. Um, I could take the day off of work and spend uh, some hours with her. And then. Well, um, without Greg being here, that's his visitation day. And it's Cassandra has had every holiday like her visitation is on every holiday and i mean i'm sure greg wanted to see her on the yeah holidays that so i should see her while he's out right, we're not we're not gonna have this argument here uh, okay. I, I will make a decision on that i understand the issues um i'm gonna put this over to april 11th at 10 30. there's already an order um, just a minute. Um, what? Uh, oh, if you want. I already signed an order um, extending the immediate emergency, um, actually the emergency minor guardianship until the full um, guardianship hearing is heard. And I don't know that that's been scheduled, but that's going to remain in effect. I have... Um, indicated a visitation schedule for both parents. And so Ms. Davenport is asking that she be able to see um, Adeline on her birthday, which is April 4th. Um, is Adeline in any kind of um, daycare or um, Head Start or anything on that day? Yes, yeah, she's in Head Start. And how long does that go to? Um um, she and Head Start from Tuesday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 1130. Okay. All right. I'd like Ms. Davenport to have time with Adeline from 1 to 4 p.m. on that date. What date was that, Your Honor? On April 4th. And if that's Mr. Reeves' time to be with Adeline, um, actually, I, I thought his time started on Thursday, but um, um he also gets her tuesdays from 3 p.m to 8 p.m all right so his time is going to be delayed then till about 4 30 on that day okay um and you can let him know that so miss Davenport, you can plan the birthday celebration between one and four on april 4th okay all right Thank anything else much. on this case no your honor miss smith you'll be able to be back on april 11th Yes, Your Honor. I think is brought that okay, thank you very much for termination. And I see the guardians are here, the um, Ms. Blevins. Good morning. Your Ms. Honor, Chris Olmstead also here from the um, Attorney General's Office uh, on behalf of the Department of Children, Youth, and Families. So, Ms. Olmstead, I think I want to address you first. Um, uh, it appears to me that um, the children need somebody other than their parents to 
care for them. Um, the current guardians are saying we're, we've just kind of aged out on being able to do that, which uh, is completely understandable. And, and I think it's admirable that they recognize that and have brought this motion. Um, but uh, it, uh, the filing from the state indicates that we, we can't just jump into a dependency hearing. So maybe you could give us some direction on what needs to happen and, um, and then we can move in that direction. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, the, the concern that the department has is that there's no authority um, to offer the relief uh, that Ms. Baldwin uh, suggests in her um, petition or her motion, I should say, which is to order um, the, for the court to order the department to file a dependency petition. Um, the statute is clear that anyone can file a dependency petition under RCW 1334-040. And so if Ms. Baldwin believes that her um, that the, the um, child is a dependent youth, um, they she could file a dependency petition on behalf of uh, her client. And there's no filing fee for such a petition. Um, so she could, you know, Ms. Blevins could do so on her own, or she could have someone else um, file as in her attorney. But again, the court doesn't have authority to order the department to file. Um, the department has been involved in this case in the past and has offered services to the family. Um, and they are not uh, in the belief that a dependency um, needs to be filed at this time. Certainly, there's uh, the court could appoint a successor guardian um, and a successor guardian could take over for the um, Blevins. Um, or if a law enforcement officer felt like there needs to be an investigation or a guardian ad litem felt like there needed to be invest an investigation into the into the dependent or potentially dependent youth, that's something that could occur also. And that would trigger the department to file a dependency. But I just don't think this court has the authority to order the department to file in um, under the R under RCW 13, I'm sorry, 11, 130 or RCW 1334. It's just not a typical way for a dependency to get started. But again, Ms. Baldwin could certainly file dependency on behalf of her clients if she felt like she needed to do so. All right, thank you. Ms. Baldwin? So addressing that, um, the request is to prevent the children from essentially being dropped off at the Kelso DSHS office, um, where, they're, where they're in the department will be required to file a dependency because the children will be sitting in their office. So instead of doing this uh, in a happenstance way, we're trying to do it in an orchestrated way that's certainly in the best interest of these children. The idea um, that my elderly clients should be required to jump through the legal gymnastics of filing a dependency, um, I think, isn't well taken. Um, they are not financially in a position to pay for that type of litigation. Two, the idea that somebody could do it pro se is, I think, we all know laughable. Um, they are not simple filings. They're not easy to no. do. They're not simple to get in front of the court. And most parties have a hard time filing standard family law type forms, let alone a dependency process, which really has no instructions on how to get from A to B and no help. Um, there really isn't any good way for people to have that information and be guided in that process. It is the state's job to file these types of actions. I can appreciate that the statute does not delineate that. There is no successor guardian. Um, we're in a position where we have essentially two children in the wind. It's the state's job to file dependencies when there is no parent. Um, and no guardian, which is what we have here. Um, so I understand the state's position. I can appreciate the state's position. Um, I also think it is literally the state's job um, to take care of children um, in these situations, if not by statute, certainly by moral obligation. All right, well, I'm gonna accept the state's position that there's no authority for it to file a dependency. And um, it seems to me the, the next option is for me to appoint a guardian ad litem to investigate this. Uh, that would be at county expense. If the guardian felt a dependency needed to be filed, the guardian could initiate that. Then the Blevins would not be in the position of having to do that if they're not inclined to do so. So uh, based on a rotating um, uh, list of guardians, I'm gonna appoint Tina Day as the guardian ad litem in this case. Right. Can we set a quick review for her? Because the issue is very straightforward. On it. Because if the court is then going to order Ms. Day to find counsel for the court to file the dependency, I mean, I'm happy to review this in a single week because, again, the issue is pretty straightforward. Ms. Day, 
Ms. Baldwin has, has asked for a one one week review. Um, we certainly could do that, Your Honor. I don't know that I will be able to accomplish much um, in one week. I would at least ask for two weeks. I have um, I have my second trial for this week today, another one Friday, and another one Monday. So the likelihood that I will be able to get much accomplished in a week is slim to none. But if we went two weeks, I certainly could uh, move that forward. I would just ask the court to be very specific what they want me to investigate and how they would, you know, some some good instructions so I know what to do moving forward and can make this as streamlined as possible. Sounds very, very straightforward from what I hear, but I don't know all the ins and outs. I'm not going to be here on April 4th, so I'm going to put it over to April 11th since I'm already involved. Okay. Um, and I would ask uh, that I, the, oh, go ahead. I'll put this in the order um, on what I, I'm inclined to ask for two things. One is um, a indication of whether a dependency is necessary with the guardians wanting to resign. And the second is, is it is there a successor guardian um, available? Ms. Baldwin has indicated no, but I, I would like Ms. Day to look into that. Um, so, um, Ms. Blevins, I'm going to leave you as guardian um, until we finish this investigation. And um, but we are moving towards um, allowing you to resign in that capacity. Uh, Thank you. But I'm not I'm not going to relieve you of that obligation today. Um, so uh, Ms. Day, who you uh, see on the screen, will be contacting you and doing some investigation and will need some background information from you to complete her investigation. OK, is the okay. court drafting the guardian ad litem order? I will. Okay, very good. And then I can reach out to Ms. Day with contact information um, so that she can have all of that. And Ms. Day, if you want to reach out to me as well, I can provide you information from the department on who has been uh, working on this case with uh, to support the family. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. I think we're all moving in the same direction. We just have to figure out how to get there, and uh, we will. So uh, just give us uh, a few weeks, and I think we'll we'll get where we need to go. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Right, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're on that. Honor. All right. Um, I guess um, there was a question last time we were here as to whether the father was served, and I, I don't think I saw um, that he was served yet. Um, I, I, I did see the full hearing. Uh, her full petition was filed, and there's a hearing on that on April 4th. Um, Ms. Ms. Farr, do you want to give me an update? I believe that the, the petitioners are on Zoom, and they were um, arranging for service. I'm not sure if it was accomplished, so perhaps they could speak to that. No, Your Honor, we have not been able to serve either parent. We have attempted on multiple occasions, and both attempts failed, so I believe we're going to have to go through the the papers do you know where the father is is different there so the kid's grandmother um yeah. he's still a nuts and we've tried that address too and it's still still not good so we do have the address for his mother um Perhaps the court would entertain using that as um, to serve by mail. I'm not sure, or maybe even substitute service. But for the mother, is different. Yeah, if if he's not living there, I think substitute service. Yeah, if uh, if there's a problem uh, to serve, we would prefer that because we've had no luck whatsoever with reaching them. Okay. Uh, here's what I'd like you to do then. Um, I'd like you to bring a motion to serve by mail. Uh, if you go on Google, uh, you can add, look at Washington State Court Forms. Okay. And under um, guardianships, there should be a motion to serve by mail there. Okay. Uh, if you want to fill that out and indicate all the attempts you've made to okay. contact the father and indicate you'd like to serve him at his mother's residence by mail. Okay. Um, bring that to the court. One of the judges should sign off on it. Then you can send the petition and the other documents um, 
both regular and certified. Okay. Okay. Um, and what I'd like you to do is do a notice of hearing for April 11th on this matter and include that in your documents that you send to the, to the mother. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And then uh, we'll be back here on April 11th. When you do that, you'll need to file a declaration that you did send it regular okay. certified to that address. Okay. Your Honor, I am in trial in Clark County on that day. Um, okay. Can we move it up to the 18th? Sure, we can go to the 18th. And um, I will um, extend the immediate emergency minor guardianship to the to the 18th. So we'll be here the 18th at 1030, okay? And then okay. if our service on the mother, you do you wish them to just keep trying to locate her or? Well, I my notes say the mother's agreed to this. Oh. Is that right? Yes, in the, the first one that she came to. We haven't been able to serve her since the first hearing that we the had. The initial for the emergency petition. Okay. Um, my uh, thought was, it, well, I thought you were in touch with her. If you were in touch, I needed her to sign something called a consent. But right. if you need to serve her and you can't locate her either, or you know where she's at and you can't get her served, uh, you could also bring a, a motion to serve by mail for her. Gotcha. Okay. And then um, I am unable to take Shyla to the dentist without mom's consent. Um, they just need a form saying that we have the emergency guardian guardianship of her. Is there, do I go to the courthouse to ask for something like a form of that sort? Well, do you have a copy of the immediate emergency minor guardianship? Yeah, I have all of the forms. Yes. And that, that gives you de decisions that over health care. That won't work. I, I just didn't know if there was a special form or anything. Sorry. <laughs> That's the form I would show to the dentist. Okay. And, and show them that you have authority over healthcare. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Farr, anything answer. else? Yeah. I'm at Ms. Woodward, Woodward, Woodworth. I will get in touch with you to help you through uh, those forms and everything. Yes. I probably will need a little bit of help, but okay. thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you back here, um, I guess, on April 18th. If I said March 18th, that was wrong. Yes. I'm here. All right. Ms. Gilmore is here. Ms. Farr is here. Um, who is the gentleman who just said uh, that you're here? Can you give me your name? My name is Brian Fletcher. Okay. And I'm Tracy Hedrick. I'm on the line with him. We're the temporary guardians. Right. Okay. I know Ms. Gilmore represents the father. Has the uh, mother in this case been served yet? Yeah. I don't believe either parent has technically been personally served. At this point, I'm obviously willing to accept service. Um, I don't know if Lillian is requiring personal service, but I don't think either one of the parties have frankly been served. I think uh, if the court wants to go into this, I think that we also have kind of a procedural issue as my client isn't the biological father of the younger child, Serenity. Um, so that bio parent needs to be named and served as well. Do we know the biological father for Serenity? So, Your Honor. Yes, we do. Uh, okay. Here too. When I spoke with petitioners yesterday, we were not, the, I, my understanding was there was not a birth certificate or a father named for Serenity. But, but mom is also on the Zoom, so perhaps mom can answer that question. Uh, person named Lillian, uh, you're the mother of both of these children, right? Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, no, I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you know who the father is for Serenity Aldrin? Yes, I do. What is his name? Miles Radcliffe. Miles, and could you spell the last name? But um, I actually do not currently know. I believe he's incarcerated. If he's not incarcerated, he's at um, a treatment center through the courts um i'm not have not been in touch with him he's one or the other right now all right so i don't know if serving him would be possible for all right um miss far is going to want to contact you to discuss that um she'll do, do that over the next week or two um and is is it lillian aldrich is that right yes all right miss aldrich what is your position on the request for 
of the minor guardianship? Um, I, of course, wish that they get given back to me. I mean, they've never been away from me. Um, they hardly know the people that they're with now. And granted, they are um, family. We, they're not family. We've spent a lot of time with. Um, and for him to, for both of them to have been taken away completely from all of their entire family, me included, I'm not sure how that's good for the children. Um, I haven't seen my kids since February 28th, and I have not been ever been away from them. And I know that... Uh, I just, I'm really wanting my kids to come home. That's why. That's, what, that's what my opinion. Okay. <clears throat> so I know the, the father of Maverick is objecting. Um, the mother of both children are objecting, is objecting. Um, and we need to get, um, I guess, both um, the father, um, McCaven Mendoza, and the father, Miles, looks like a Radcliffe, um, sir. Well, he would most definitely object. Say that one more time. Miles would most definitely object. Okay. Well, he still needs to be served. And um, that's uh, Ms. Farr, the court visitor, is appointed to help in that process. So okay. um, she will work with um, the petitioners on that. I think um so your honor if I may kind of just give you a little overview of what's actually going on please so there, there are some uh there are C there is CPS involvement um which led to the filing of the petition and um there is also an ongoing family law matter which I'll uh, let Ms. Gilmore speak to um and she is uh, currently waiting for an order to be signed, giving father custody. I have briefly talked with father, but I haven't actually interviewed him or interviewed or uh, uh, been able to see the home that Maverick could possibly be um, living in if, if father were to get custody. I have not spoke with mother yet, but I will be getting in contact with her this week as well. So I have met with the children um, Maverick is, the children are being well taken care of in the petitioner's home. They are, um, they're safe, they're being fed, they're being sheltered, everything is fine. Maverick is very happy there. Um, and Maverick is, does, would like to have some visitation with father. Um, and he has had some visitation with father. Um, and if, if the custody order is signed by uh, Judge Fassett, then um, there needs to be some slow integration back into father's care for Maverick's emotional well-being. Um, and so father is on vacation next week and um, petitioners are, are wanting to give father some uh, a couple of overnights to see how he does with getting Maverick to and from school and see how Maverick adjusts to being at father's home for more than one day. Um, and I, I can't speak as to what's going on with mother because I haven't spoke with mother yet and I haven't spoke with CPS yet. And your honor, I can update the court regarding the family law matter. Um, Please. We did we did file a motion for immediate restraining order asking for an immediate transfer of custody into my client's care. I did speak with Brie Broughton this morning, just right before this hearing. She indicated to me that Judge Fassett did sign that immediate order um, yesterday evening and provided that to the clerks. Um, I just checked Odyssey again and it's still not up, um, but that is the current, um, and my understanding of what, what is occurring um, for the record. So your position is that order supersedes the order entered in this proceeding. And that's the difficulty of this case. And that's what I was talking to Judge Bassett about um, on the record last week. Um, and she kind of directed me into this procedure is doing at least giving the client, um, at least on a media basis, custody of the child so that this court um, could allow some sort of transition if that's what they believe is in the best interest of the child. I think procedurally it's difficult because based on the minor guardianship statute, I don't think that um, the petitioners have really set forth any allegations against my client. And given the fact of, you know, this immediate restraining order, I think that um, he is willing, he is able. Um, do I agree that some sort of transitionary schedule might be in the best interest of the child? Um, frankly, likely. Um, but procedurally, I don't think that we've met the standards for the RCW 
Um, and I think that either we order a transitionary schedule back to my client under this case, um, or frankly, just dismiss um, for lack of standing. Well, this court has already entered an immediate emergency minor guardianship. I've, I've extended that um, pending the investigations. And I, I think we need to go forward with that. Um, uh, it's interesting yeah. when we have competing orders uh, that we have to address. I've advised my client that he can't obviously just go and pick up the child. Um, there's no sort of intent that we're going to just um, backdoor this process. Um, if Ms. Farr is recommending, um, what I was understanding was three overnights. Um, what I would recommend is maybe engaging in those overnights, trying to get information from CPS and mother, and then maybe setting another review for a week or two. At that point, um, the media order will be on Odyssey and the court can observe that. Um, I just don't want any too much of delay in this process, given my concerns, again, without lack of standing for, um, you know, any sort of limiting factors to father. Yeah. All right. I'd like to, um, here's my thought. I'd like to, be Your let me finish and then um, I'll let you speak, Ms. Aldridge. Um, could, I, could I just say something about that? Okay, against what I just said, fine, go ahead. What would you like to say? I'm sorry, you cut out right there. Please go um, forward. Just that he's my biological father and we got as children, child abuse and neglect and many other things. And I just don't quite understand how my children were put with someone that I was taken away from as a child due to abuse and neglect. And I have always been there for my children. I am a, I'm a good mother to my children. And these are all allegations. These are not, um, these are not facts. Um, I know I would just really, 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 um, my, my kids, uh, um, deserve to be home. And I, I don't understand how any of this actually came about happening. I asked for help for while I was incarcerated and then this spiraled off from here. Um, my kids have never been taken. My kids have never been, um, questioned. CPS has opened an investigation, but then did not continue to follow through because they didn't have anything to stand on. Um, there's nothing There's nothing legitimately against me as to why I can't have my children. And um, I just would really like my children to come home. All right, this petition was filed. And once a petition for minor guardianship is filed, the court has an obligation to follow through. Um, the petitioners have indicated that they're, they will agree to three overnights with the father. Um, I'll get to that in a moment. Um, I've also been told that there's CPS involvement. I don't know um, anything about that other than what I've been told today. What I'd like to do is put this over one week in hopes that Ms. Farr can meet with Ms. Aldridge look at the CPS issues, and I would like to see if um, we can start the children seeing Ms. Aldridge on some sort of plan beginning next week. Um, and I don't know if that's possible, but um, I would like to start that as soon as I can. Um, as to the father, if the petitioners are comfortable uh, with the overnights, I'll allow uh, the overnights up to three over the next week. Um, I don't understand how he's allowed overnight visits and I can't even see my children. I've never, I, CPS will again prove um, the same thing that I've said to you. Um, I've always taken care of my children. And I'm hoping that that's um, what we're going to find out in the next week when you meet with Ms. Farr, okay? Your Honor, it's been almost a month since I've seen them or talked to them. Ms. Aldridge, I, I'm not gonna order visitations with you until Ms. Farr has a chance to talk to you. And I can talk, attempt to call um, Tracy Fowler again and get an update or work with Ms. Farr on and getting whatever information regarding the CPS investigation as well. I was in pretty constant communication with Ms. Fowler for a while there at the beginning of this case. 
All right, we'll see everybody back here on March 28th and at 10.30. Um, and I'm, um, I'm hoping everybody cooperates so I, we can get an update um, at that time, okay? Is the court entering an order for the three overnights or do you want me to prepare something? Why don't you prepare something to go more on that? Uh, can I enter that ex parte? I don't have Ms. Aldridge's email. If you can direct it to me, then I can go ahead and sign off on it. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Honor, did, we already, did you already hear the Lewis matter, Lance Lewis guardianship? I am calling it right now. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, guardianship of Lance Lewis. Hello. All right. Good morning. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Good. Um, does the father consent to the emergency guardianship? No. Okay. And uh, have both parents been served at this point? Just no, me. just me. As far as I know. Okay. Just a moment here. No problem. All right, so Ms. Barnes, you're the mother. Yes. What's sir. your position on the minor guardianship? Um, I had gotten um, an eviction out of my housing and was in the middle of transferring my move. Um, I asked her to help me watch the child. She did for a couple of days. And then um, I was all set up into a Lido with my um, a good friend, had a a room for me, my children, everything till we got settled into our new place. And um, he was visiting with his dad and she took him and then said she's had him the whole time. I have proof that she is not. Um, I've never, uh, I have a 21 year old and um, have never been found any findings with CPS or any, the, any reason that my child should not be at least able to speak to me. He has a huge burn on his hand, I guess, from getting burnt and stuff. He mm -hmm. does talk to his siblings. Um, that's the only way I know that because um, they were crying about it. Um, I'm just worried about his well being. Uh, he's never been away from his mother. Uh, I don't know how he's dealing with that. And I'm just worried about him and mm -hmm. wondering what I need to do now next to get this moving. All right, and it looks like um, the petitioners, Gail Levitt and Roy Levitt, I don't see that they're with us today. Uh, so, all right, Ms. Day. Not sure. Yes, I've had a chance to meet with um, the petitioners as well as meet Lance. Um, and he is doing very well, just to let mom know that he is doing well. He, um, CPS is involved and they're uh, meeting with the family, the grandparents and Lance um, this week. I'm hoping to hear from them either today or tomorrow. So I'll have some more information about that. Um, there are fairly significant concerns and at this point, um, which would include substance abuse issues for both the parents that are longstanding as well as domestic violence. Um, I'm very concerned for uh, Lance's physical health. He um, appears to be very malnutrition and I'm waiting for the information from the doctor about his physical health. He is... Um, extremely small, um, very, very underweight. Um, I was able to have a look at his shot records. He was only behind on one record. So that has been taken care of, but he hasn't had a full physical and that is in process, I believe this week or early next week. I can't remember the date. May I say something? Yes, Ms. Barnes, go ahead. All of my children are very small children. I have proof of that. I have been through, uh, Lance has been through, he, when he was born, he wasn't even on the percentile at all. He was under it. Uh, he was a very, very small baby. All my children are, I'm small. His dad was small. His dad was four pounds when he was born. And um, I've gone to um, WIC and every nutritionist that I could um, possibly go to. He's always uh, had his, what he calls baby's milk, which is the pediasure. They, I don't know if they're giving it to him or not, or if they've set his wick up or not, but that stuff's very important to him. 
and I am aware of his, uh, you know, he's just uh, eats constant. He's just a steady, slow eater. But he is growing. Uh, he's gotten went from like zero to, to on the 16th percentile. So that is just where where we're at with that. But uh, even Wick didn't say like that they were concerned about it. But that's all I have to say. Thank you. Ms. Day, what would you recommend at this point? So at this point, I would recommend that the child remain with the petitioners um, and there be some phone contact with mom until we can kind of get through this. I hope to get some information very quickly. So I don't want to belabor that. Um, Monique, I would like to have some contact information for you from you. Um, I tried to, to get some information, hadn't gotten very far. So I don't know if you want to give me a phone number um, or if yes, you absolutely. That. can you type that? In? Oh, it's just us here. If you want to give me that, there's nobody else here. So, okay. Three, six, I'll I also have an today. email. Oh, that? perfect. Okay. Email, email is Monique at gmail.com. All right. I'll shoot you an email real quick. Perfect. Thank uh, you. Are the petitioners comfortable with uh, telephone uh, visits? Do you know? I do not know, but I can certainly ask them. Um, I don't know why. I don't think that would be a huge thing. Um, you know, it would allow for some contact. I know that he is having contact with his siblings. Um, and he, I mean, I, I saw the burn on his hand. He does have a burn on the palm of his hand. It's been well cared for. Um, he showed it to me willingly. Um, he is a very sweet young man. He is. He's a wonderful child. Thank you. All right. Um, if I put this over to April 11th, would that uh, be enough yes. time to look into everything? Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm going to put this over to April 11th at 1030. Okay. Um, if the petitioners agree, so I'm going to give them a little bit of control here. Okay. Um, then I would like uh, Ms. Barnes to have two telephone visits a week with Lance. Um, Ms. Day, um, you'll have to do the communication, I think, between the two yep. of them. I'm happy to, to facilitate what, that. What day works and what time works. Um, Lance is four. He's going to have kind of, you know, he's not going to be able to talk probably for an hour, but, you know, no. you get 15, 20 minutes, uh, at least there'll be some contact. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And if the petitioners for some reason absolutely don't want to, I'm going to let them make that call. Oh. And Ms. Barnes, I'm sorry if that's the case. And we'll address it when we come back on April 11th. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, so we'll see you back here then. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you for you. your work. Have a good day.